Ah, Christmas, my favorite time of year. It's all around us. The sound of Christmas carols in the air, the smell of cookies in the oven, the sound of an Evite cash register making its one million sale. It's my favorite time of year. It's a good time for corporate. Shell, remind me that I have an extremely important meeting tomorrow with corporate. Sure thing, hot pants. Updating your calendar. Thank you. And it looks like Santa came a little early this year. Ah, let's see what we've got. Ah, this one's from the jolly fat man himself. How thoughtful. Let's see. Yeah. Huh. That fat bastard tried to assassinate me again. Not this year, you big oaf. All right, let's see what else we got. Uh, this one looks... This one looks fairly promising. Look at that! This year's best game, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Corporate really does care. The amount of corporate meddling in this one. Oh! It's ecstasy. I'm saving this one for later if you know what I mean. Uh, looks like there's one left. Huh. This one doesn't say who it's from. Well, if I know anything. It's either an explosive device or a pair of sexy underwear. Oh! It's the new Fobarm Tri-Shot Shotgun in Desert Tan. The best Christmas present is all of that sweet, sweet YouTube revenue. <laughs> The real STF-12 is a tactical shotgun produced by Fabarm, an Italian shotgun manufacturer. It is intended for military and law enforcement operations. The Spring Airsoft version is produced by Black Ops Manufacturer. From what I've seen, they seem to have partnered with VFC to produce two versions of this gun. One being the Springer, and one being the more expensive CO2 model with a folding stock. The STF-12 comes in a nice looking Fabarm box with a speed loader, two tri-shot shells, the weapon sights, an unjamming rod, and some small delicious snacks. The gun is fairly well made for an airsoft weapon that costs around $80 after shipping. It's primarily made of a firm polymer with a metal barrel and ammo tube. It has an aggressive, breacher-style flash hider, perfect for goring your enemies or punching out fun shapes while you're making your Christmas cookies. This model has a CQB barrel and a fixed stock with a thick rubber butt pad. The plastic stock feels a little thin and lightweight to me, and isn't as solid as I'd like, but it feels good to shoulder and aim with. Speaking of weight, the STF-12 weighs around 4 pounds with no attachments. It's a little light, but it feels better than a lot of other airsoft shotguns that I've handled. The pump and pistol grip have a nice rubber finish. The small plastic rail on the action is a nice touch, but I wouldn't trust it with a foregrip. It could snap off. Instead, I put a rail cover on to make it a little easier to get a hold of. The gun has a plastic top rail. Now, this can be removed to reveal standard shotgun sights that are molded into the receiver and barrel shroud. The primary gun sights look awesome and have fiber optic filaments, but are made of a very cheap plastic. The rear one is a green shotgun ring, while the front has a red fiber optic post. The sight picture is a little limited, but I had no trouble when shooting at close range. That said, it's rare to get such cool looking external upgrades included with a gun like this, so I'm pretty stoked. Who cares about sights? It's a shotgun, you're gonna be blasting zombies from the hip anyways. The gun is loaded through the loading gate, which is opened using this switch here. It accepts standard tri-shot shells, the same ones that go in the popular UTG shotguns. I also tested this with 14 round shot shells, and it works just as well. For those of you who have never seen a tri-shot, they basically have three barrels to simulate the effect of a real shotgun. Operation is pretty basic. You load the shell, remove the safety, pump the action, and fire. Once the gun is cocked, it can't be pumped again to overload the barrels. The action was very stiff the first time I operated it, but it loosened up after around 20 shots. The safety locks the trigger and has a nice solid click. 
It also has a red ring on the driver's side to show when the gun is hot. Range drops off around 60 to 70 feet. Your max engagement distance won't be much past 100 feet. It has a fixed hop up, so this is about the best you're gonna get with this gun. I experienced some BBs flying in weird directions, but I'm confident it can engage human-sized targets at close ranges with no problems. After all, you have three BBs headed in your enemy's direction instead of one. Given its low FPS, it's definitely intended for CQB. I had difficulty chronoing this gun because it fires three BBs at the same time. Now, EVIC lists it as shooting at around 300 FPS, which means it should be safe for CQB fields. In my opinion, that's where it belongs. Okay, so aesthetically, uh, this gun is really cool. Um, I like the trademarks on it, as well as like kind of the interesting uh, shaped grip, and the, uh, the action up here is really cool as well. Um, I'm also a huge fan of these um, slanted uh, heat vents on the on the barrel shroud. These are really really cool. They kind of give it a, a unique that that unique futuristic look that I'm really into. So another really nice thing on this gun is the the, the top rail allows you to add, just attach a ton of shit, just whatever you want. Uh, rail covers, flashlight. I got the included gun sights on there. I also have a riser with this uh, the center point. Looks really cool. Um, so I'm really not a big fan of the the build material. You have uh, like the, the kind of rigid plastic that's just not, uh, it doesn't have as much give as say like a G36. The stock is also kind of weird to me. Uh, it looks great, but it's very uh, light. It's very light. I feel like if I took a hard fall, this thing would just shatter into a million pieces. So despite the cheaper build material, there's it's really a well-made gun. There's no wobble to the, the stock um, or the pump. Uh, the grip doesn't move at all, which I would definitely expect with um, a gun that costs around $70 after, after taxes. The sights are made of a cheap plastic, but they are, um, they look really cool. And honestly, like we usually don't get sights with, with cheap guns like this. So, uh, I mean, at the very least, we got a nice aesthetic thing that we can kind of just put on there for looks at the, at the very least. So the color is really nice, but you can see after you've pumped it a couple of times, the finish kind of gets scratched off a little bit by the pump where it comes over the receiver right there. You get kind of a streak. Um, that's probably only an issue with the tan model because it is a, it is a lighter color. Uh, the black one probably will not have the same issue because it's dark and it, it, that's not gonna show up as well on here. Now, the one thing that I am definitely not a fan of are these sling points on here. They are molded into the gun, uh, and they are made of a very, very brittle plastic. Uh, these things are just primed to snap directly off the second any external pressure touches them. I mean, they are, they are really, really funny. I can just sit here and bend them with my, with my finger. Don't trust these with a sling. If you are gonna carry this as a secondary, find a different way to sling it. Like, I've got a, uh, a one point sling uh, mounts on the back here on the stock. Another option would be a, a shotgun scabbard that you could just slide it into on your back. Overall, I like this thing. It'd be great to bring with you in your car to back up your primary or practice your room clearing skills at your CQB field. The lack of a hop up kind of removes the competitive edge, but up close you can still dominate and feel like a badass. Now pumping this thing is fun as hell and I can't wait to take it out to the field soon. Overall, I give the STF-12 an 8 out of 10 for its unique looks despite some unimpressive build materials. As far as performance goes, I give it a 7 out of 10. It's a sturdy piece of equipment for a CQB gun, but the fixed hop-up is a big limitation for outdoor play. As far as practicality is concerned, I give this gun a 6 out of 10. It's a fun CQB weapon, but a submachine gun platform like my precious Tokyo Marui P90 is just more versatile. Plus, it doesn't have those gorgeous Belgian curves. So all in all, I really like this gun. It's pretty awesome. I still don't know who it's from. Ah, sounds like my Christmas cookies are ready. Ah, making Christmas cookies. My favorite Christmas pastime. Next to, of course, aggressive interrogations on Christmas Eve. Ah, my grandmother's recipe. She used to boast that these were the best cookies in the world. They're pretty good, but I don't remember having that chemical aftertaste. 
Cinnamon. Hang on a second. This isn't cinnamon. This is elephant tranquilizer! There's only one person that could have infiltrated my house without me knowing. Santa! That bastard's tried to assassinate me three years in a row! It's all because I ate that reindeer in Beirut! You're not gonna kill me, you fat bastard! You can't kill me! Oh no! Outside is frightful. The fire is so delightful. She's so no peaceful. I wanna kill that son of a bitch. I need weapons! My pool! Edith Matt slashed my tires and left me stranded in the Mojave. Reach. Reach, wake up. Wake up. How long have I been out? You've been asleep for six days. There was a lethal amount of elephant tranquilizer in your bloodstream. I had to activate your no, antitoxin. No. No, no, no. That means... I missed a meeting with corporate. Oh, God! Oh, God! Views on a review of a I don't gun. Care. Of a gun. I'm a star. 